Okay, and then Morton, how did you get attached to this project? Um, I I got attached sort of like the old-fashioned way. Um, I I'm Norwegian, as some of you know uh, or here. You did it the Norwegian way. Yeah, I did the Norwegian way. No, I I, I just came to Hollywood uh, after my previous movie, which was Headhunter, which is an action thriller, and I get which has been really popular in in in, in Hollywood. So so I guess a lot of scripts, which was all action thrillers and superhero films. And then um, my agents called me and said, this this beautiful script that you read, it's probably not what you're looking for, but it's just such a phenomenal story, so just read it. And uh, I, I always loved history, and I always thought I knew history really well, but I was kind of shocked about how little I knew about Alan Turing. And, and I fell in love with the script. And uh, I think as a filmmaker, you don't pick your projects. You fall in love with them. It's, they come to you in some way, and it, you become obsessed with them. And it's the only way to, to make a movie, I think. So, so I was very lucky that this came up. And, and uh, I talked to uh, Teddy Sportsman, who's not here. He's the third producer. We had a Skype. We had a breakfast meeting together. And then and he paid for the movie. Right. He finally. He finally. He financed the movie. Finance, finance the movie. Well, well paid, I mean, all paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he did. I mean, it's. I. But that was I, a big bet for him. It was, and it's and it's kind of nice. This is to me sort of like this is a this in Hollywood. This is a really small budget. It's a fourteen fifteen million dollar movie. Uh, where I come from, it's very large because we make smaller budget in the movie in, in Scandinavia. So to me, it was a very cute sort of like nice stepping stone to do sort of like an independent movie here and and and. I really appreciated that we were, it was us. It, it was, you know, the three producers, me and Graham, sort of like that it became this sort of like this family mm. who became on the quest to, to do this, do do this. And, and so you were attached before Benedict Cumberbatch? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I always saw Benedict as, as when I read it. I mean, I knew his work well uh, as European. I mean, I, it was like for, before he really become well known here. This is before Star Trek and before Sherlock. Mm -hmm. Became a big thing, so so. But I, I always pictured it. There's something enigmatic with Benedict. There's something uh, that you can't put your finger on. He's sort of he can portray a character that is so layered. Uh, you know, Antoine is so driven and so strong, and at the same time so fragile and so awkward. And this, you know, there's this little boy who lost so much, which is always there. So so. I, I always wanted Benedict, and, and I met with a few others because there was somebody who was already in conversation. Uh, but, but to me, Benedict's always been an turn for me. So, so how did you, you guys had somebody else in mind, and then, so how, how did that come about? I mean, he's, he really, when you see him, y you feel like he's kind of a natural, you know, fit. For for the role, yeah, it had been through this process because we kind of spent uh, we sort of had this lost year at Warner Brothers where when the spec when the spec initially went out it, it was initially optioned by Warner Brothers um, we sort of had this like year in the desert um, of trying to make this very little movie um, in a place that is not very little um, <laughs> it's not designed to make little movies um, sort of was it was this like a Jeff Robinoff project or something and then he got off yeah I mean that, it was something that they were all very supportive and honestly like I've done a lot of work for them since like I love my friends at Warner Brothers but it was just um, it, it didn't it was a very small movie in a very big place um, and I like I don't know when the last time they made a 15 million dollar movie was but I don't think it's very soon or very recently rather um, and so there were like bigger named actors sort of attached to it and then Annabelle but it didn't star any people <laughs> <laughs> no, David, David, actually, very. It's very funny. That They've been both, great. Both of us has projects at Warner now, and they always go like, "That's the movie." But they're sort of like, "I'm so glad that you guys got it out of the system and got it out of, you know, Wait, did it got it out of, yeah, and did it independently because that movie is so such a great project, it's such a great story. So I'm sure glad you did it. So actually, Warner has been. They've been great. I mean, great about it. So great so great, so. Yeah. so yeah, because we, we But both, when we, we went independently, yeah. yeah. They let us sort of... The idea of going independent was that we could sort of cast anyone we wanted. We didn't have to do any foreign sales. We didn't have to do anything. It could just be whoever we wanted, whoever Morton felt was most appropriate, you know. And so we, it, was, it was great. Like, we could... We were this sort of very small, as he said, like, intimate little team of just sort of the five of us, like, going to London and making this movie um, the way it always felt like and it should be. And it was really... It's been a very unique experience as a filmmaker because... Uh, like like Benedict, I, I was like, okay, I need to convince Benedict Cumberbatch to do this part, and we're going to do Skype because 
I was in Cape Town, and he was actually in LA, so it's kind of opposite. He was very hangover. He'd just been at the, uh, the Emmy. Uh, he was so very hangover. Very hangover. <laughs> um, but it's, you start off with a conversation, and he's read the script, and then he tries to convince me to be part of the film. So it's, it's one of those... You made him pitch you. <laughs> no, he said, he said, what can I do to convince you to be, to be Alan Turing? I said, okay, I'm trying, going to try and convince you to be Alan Turing. So, so no, but it, it was one of those, like everybody I asked said yes. It's one of those that, that, that you know, this is both in front of and, and behind the camera. We had all these amazing, talented people that all wanted to come on board on this small indie movie. Uh, you know, I was, you know, all the actors, Kira, whatever, I mean, they all, you know, got a fraction of their salary or something, but they all wanted to do this. And same with Billy Goldenberg, who just, as an editor, just won the, the Oscar for Argo and Serial Authority, was the hottest editor. And, and the small indie movie is the one he did wanted to do. And Alessandro Splat, who wrote this beautiful music, it's an amazing composer. Yeah, big applause for Alessandro. He's, uh, you know how long it took him to do this music? Two and a half weeks. I'm not kidding. It's I was there when he did it, and I have no idea how he did it. <laughs> uh, it's 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 bloody amazing. And uh, and he he had three weeks because uh, Unforgiven was uh, no Unbroken. Sorry, Unbroken uh, was was pushed. So and I said no, no, no. There's no way you can do it in three weeks. That this movie inspired me. He was French. It was my bad French accent. <laughs> uh, it's better than my Norwegian yeah, accent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, no. It's 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 just. One of these projects that want to make itself a little bit. It's 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 been truly special.